Hey, traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, May 25, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Let's start with the big picture. What have we been talking about over the last couple of weeks? At the end of this week, we're looking for some kind of turning point. Why was that? We said the market would trade up or down into these time frames as a tendency to turn the tape. The market was trading down into the end of this week. Yesterday, we appear to have seen a turn. Today was a nice little pop in the S&P, up about 35 points. They're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend until your crap gets thrown out the window. Another thing that we discuss from time to time is these three-day holiday weekends. Is it common or uncommon for the market to trade down into these three-day holiday weekends? We've got one coming up. Monday, the market is closed for the Memorial Day holiday weekend here in the U.S. The market has a tendency to float them into the three-day holiday weekend. Just taking a peek over at the weekly chart, we see we're still hovering underneath the 100-week moving average. Just because they touched it last week and pulled back a little bit, this week doesn't mean they're not going to ultimately get through. If they close the week poorly, that's a different story. If they float them up into the end of the week, they're probably somewhere north of where they are now. Maybe, maybe not above the 100-week moving average. It really doesn't matter. What matters is, technically speaking, there's nothing wrong with the tape. We take it at face value. We're the umpire calling balls and strikes. A couple of other things from an observationalist perspective. You have a low. You have a higher low. You have a higher low. That is, by definition, an uptrend. Just looking at this 240-minute chart, for example, bring something else to the forefront. Anybody that's taken the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader, will understand that what we had here yesterday into today was what? An on-time type of situation. About the 120-minute chart. Anybody see another on-time type of situation? It certainly deserves one of those funny how that works. Let's talk about both sides of the tape leading into tomorrow. Let's say they're killing them at the open. They're trading down tomorrow for whatever reason. The reason never matters. They're generally excuses. We'll keep it very simple and broad for the purposes of this video here. If they're trading down tomorrow and below today's low, today's low is 412.41, and I'll give you a little hint. We were buying 412.50. How you doing? We'll get to that later. And not only did we do it once, it was a play it again Sam situation. We did it twice. If they're below today's low, there's a gap down here. The closing price is 411.09. And then certainly inside the number members, we'll have a beat on the rest of the needed information first thing in the morning. We call that zero dark 30. If they're floating them up tomorrow, 417 is a big spot. Above 417, there's another leg higher Then they'll start approaching some of the stuff from a few days ago. And again, inside the number members, we'll certainly have the specific numbered resistance and support areas as we do each and every day inside the numbers and certainly in the live room. Speaking of inside the numbers, we'll start with some of the early commentary. This is the Zero Dark 30 stuff. Had a nice big overnight rally on our hands courtesy of NVIDIA. We were looking for a turn around the end of the week. This qualifies for a funny how that works. Numbers shape up like this. The pre-market thieves have already filled a gap up where Tuesday's close was. That was above 414. It was 414.10. That was our early bull pivot. We think better in pictures, so we'll set the table with right of the vertical as today's activity. 414.10 is the horizontal line running across the screen. That's the bull pivot. You can see what happens when they're below. It's overhead resistance, overhead resistance. Once they can establish price above and stay above, it's support and they're intent on getting to the next place that's higher. We'll get to that later. Here we are again down here, the bull pivot. 
the pivot, whatever you want to call it, once again support on the way back down in the afternoon. Getting above and staying above opens the door for another leg higher. To where? About 4.15.80, give or take. How you doing? They spiked it a little bit. What I do for members is I give them the numbers. They have the understanding that the market doesn't necessarily stop on a dime at these numbers. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. These numbers are magnetic. They're important. When price is below, they're overhead resistance. And when price is above, they are support. Now look down here. The non-super bull cases that they can morph into a DCB, dead cat bounce, rather than just a blast off, up all day, trend day up, those are more of an anomaly than the rule. They're the exception, not the rule. Trend days happen sometimes. They don't happen a lot of the times. So if it's just a DCB and they're going to have one of these back and forth situations, we're looking for where support is. It opens the door down to what? 412.50. Once again, how you doing? Now here's the trick. How could we have bought 412.50 twice and the second time was in the live room in real time and I'm going to show you in a few minutes how and why that happened. They didn't get there the second time, but there was something else that was developing on the chart. I'm going to show it to you in a couple of minutes. What I urge you to do is pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. Early in the morning, 9.15, market's pushing up. If they're going to continue pushing up, we're interested in a short trade. That number was 415.80. You already saw it. My number. And if reached, there should be overhead resistance and a reaction back in the other direction. They didn't run right up there out of the gate. They did it later. But this was the morning trade had they just kept going out of the gate. Again, pause them, read them, go back to the chart, double check the work. Now the market's open. They get to that bull bear battle place the pivot and below 414 should be 10 it says 14 and the door is open for 41250 which is the top end of a bounce back in the other direction zone this is 2 minutes into the day the zone was down about another dollar down to 1140 41140 that's the zone for a bounce back in the other direction it begins at 41250 this was posted on the board right at the opening bell or after it and as you can see, by the time they came into it, it was the candle ending at 1025. They flirted with it a couple of times here. Now, of course, we have traders inside the numbers and in the live room that are taking the give or take part of these trades. Sometimes they're going to get in a little bit in front of the number from experience. They know how this works. They're comfortable trading into the zone. They're going to have multiple entries. They're okay with having an entry above. So they had a scalp trade early. Traders that waited got it just a little while later under 41250 at 41250 nice rip back in the other direction pause the video read the notes go back to the chart and double check the work and all along we're saying just cuz they're hovering there's still a zone at 41250 to 41140 they'll spike the low and rip it back up in the other direction they did that a couple of times we had traders in the room that participated in that a couple of times we have something for everybody shorts longs stocks on the move stuff we find during the day there is something for everybody let me scroll up catch the notes read them everything's in here everything traders need in terms of the numbers what's going on where the trades are where the support is where the resistance is this is a morning business therefore the majority of the business each and every day is done during the morning session once you get into lunchtime and beyond it's not the same type of tape. I leave the live room with this thought every single day. Don't do stupid stuff in the afternoon and your results will skyrocket. We're a hit and run business. We treat it, and I say this every day in the live room, we treat it like a store. You're going to a store, the market is like a store. When you go there, you go in the morning, you go to get what you need, and you don't hang out there all day. You go home, you get what you want, you take care of your business, and you leave the store, you go about your other business. The market's open all day. That doesn't mean you have to shop there all day long. You get what you need, you get out of there, you pile up the base hits, base hits put you in the Hall of Fame, your account compounds, your chart, meaning your own personal graph of your chart of your account, looks from lower left to upper right, it compounds, and over time you increase your position size, and that's a winning strategy. 
That's what we talk about in the live room each and every day. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. It's all in here, all the numbers you need each and every day. I just want to highlight a few important things and those interested will actually do it. What's it? They will actually read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. Probably about 5% of you watching this will ever, ever do that. Those are the ones that will likely find success. Slightly different chart, it's a 15 minute chart, it doesn't matter, we'll go back and forth. But I wanna show you the second trade. I wanna show you the one that was in real time in the live room. We were talking about the chart, we were talking around things, and I said, hey look, this is kinda of jumping out at me. So I put this trend line on the chart. We can go back to a five minute chart, you see it a little bit more magnified. And the market draws these trend lines, we don't draw these trend lines, but this is a bona fide trend line, it happens to intersect with an important price, 412.50, and even though we just took this trade, I said to traders in the room, this can hold, we're not sure if it will hold for sure, however, this is a bona fide trend line, it jumped out at me, we talked about it, a lot of traders took this in the room and took a second rocket ride all the way up, back above 414. We had traders get 15, 20, 25 S&P handles today on a couple, three trades, and more. There's real money being made in the live room. Thank you very much. Right there. That was the play it again, Sam spot. What about stocks on the move? We had a couple of wild movers in here today. We're going to take a look at the chart of Snow, Dollar Tree, Path, Intel, ADI. DG didn't hit its number, and that was the only one today that didn't. You never know what Mrs. Market is going to give you. We take what she gives. We don't invent trades. Every day, the same stuff is on the board. We look at the market the same way, and we take what Mrs. Market gives each and every day. Snowflake, getting a buzz cut at the opening bell. You can see the first price did the deal. They gave you the trade. Doesn't look like much on this chart, but the high here is 150.90 off of 148.30. That's a nice little trade. Base it, we had some participants in the room. Then the third level worked later on. Nobody wants this when they come close back to the first number, but we did have some traders that took the third price and even below the third price near the stop, and they were handsomely rewarded. Snowflake, nice trade. How about Dollar Tree getting a buzz cut at the open? Stock closed yesterday at 155 and a quarter, blew through the first number that doesn't exist, blew through the second number that doesn't exist. They opened below the first and second number. It's only the third, and where'd this one down here come from? In real time, traders in the room were in the third number. They said, hey, what's the next number? I said, hey, 130.20. Some traders bought that, and the rest is history. And it's history anyway, because there was no stop out on this. There was just a rip back in the other direction. So whether you bought 134.10 or averaged at 130.20 in the live room, either way, traders were paid accordingly. Nice trade in Dollar Tree. Something for everybody. How about Unipath? Same routine. First number's off the board. They open below it. Second and third number, they come into both, spike them, rip it back in the other direction. Nice trade. The rest is history. You see this each and every day. These are zones of support. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. They are zones of support during the morning rush. You need a little bit of patience to let the market do its thing. They're not all going to work out 100% of the time. The majority of the trades do work out. About Intel, buzz cut at the open, not the greatest trade on the board, but not bad either way. First number, second number, averages in half, and this is what they did. So they basically got you back to even, no harm, no foul, if you did them both. I'll take that over an L any day. How about analog devices? This was a wild one too. First number's off the board, second number's off the board. Third number, they spiked it pretty good, but what did they do? They turned around, ripped it back up in the other direction, and they gave you the deal, and then some. We had participation in the live room in all these stocks, and inside the numbers. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, they were down $1.50 on the day or so, not participating with the rest of the market. Whether it has something directly to do with the regional banks, or it's just the fact that my favorite market leading indicator has relative weakness, and that's just the way I'm looking at it. That is the case. We revert to the weekly chart, always. Nothing has changed. You got to move down, and you have this bearish, 
flaggish channel going on. They went to the top of the channel this week, and now they're headed back to the bottom of the channel. Once they break the bottom of this channel, it's good night, Irene. If they break the top of the channel, they break the chain and they run up to this area around 190. There's energy in here spooled up. It's going to be released in one way or the other. They can't get through the top of the channel. What do they do? They get rejected to the bottom of the channel. Is the excuse the regional banks or is it directly just the IWM is down? You can choose. If you need an excuse, use the regional banks. If you don't need an excuse, you don't. Now, what about the folks down at the transportation department? We have a divergence between my two favorite market leading indicators. IWM is A number one, transports are A number two, but they're A number one, what? You got it, canary in the coal mine. They had a nice bounce type of day today, nice little pop, if you will, right into the 20 period moving average, stop short. They're below all the moving averages. The trend is your friend until it's not. We revert to the weekly chart. We're coming into a weekly close tomorrow. They're below not all the moving averages, but they're certainly in a weaker position on the chart, except for you have, and we talked about this a few days ago, you have a breakup candle over here. Let's point it out right here. And you can see here that they have yet to get below on a closing basis. They keep fighting this place. So they go to the breakup candle low. They test it. They spike it but they pop back up each and every time. This is a weekly chart. Are they going to have a reaction in the other direction? Meaning the energy that's building here by going sideways week after week after week, it's going to be released one way or the other. Is it going to be in the upward direction or are they going to break down, close below the low of this breakup candle and release it in the southern direction? We don't know exactly what, but when you do know what the market is attempting to do you have a beat or a leg up on most of the other people in the market most just guess for a living we use things on the charts to determine is it turning bullish is it turning bearish did they do something weird where's that place are they above or below that place that turns the market this way or that way when you have those things you have something nearby to have a bullish or bearish bias what about the q people on the Direct hit from NVIDIA. NVIDIA was up tremendous today, like 70 or 80 bucks, whatever it was. Hence, the Qs go higher. NVIDIA is one of those stocks in the top 10. 50% of the Qs equals 10 stocks. One of them's not even a tech stock. Go figure that one out. That's PepsiCo. So say nine tech stocks make up 50% of the Qs. How you doing? Weekly chart. You see them breaking out above the 100-week moving average. Your pivot high. We talked about this last week. They're above this pivot high. They closed above it last week, maintain above it this week. If they close again above it, they're headed where? To another destination. What is that destination? Well, there's something important up here right around 350. Whether they stop there, stop short, go through it, either way, there's a magnet type of situation going on around 350. It's not to the exact penny. Here's a Fibonacci retracement. It's a 618. 349.54, but these aren't to the penny. I just did it quickly. So it's somewhere around between 349 and 350 is a 618. Where are they headed? Well, they're likely being drawn up into that place. And by the way, just in case you hadn't noticed, and let's get rid of this and let's do something else. They have what I like to call unfinished business, an open gap at 349.15. And why is it unfinished business? Just because it's an open gap because they tried to fill it over here and they came up short. Same thing even the week before. This is a weekly chart. So this is an open gap and it's right around that 618 retracement. So the market is likely being drawn up into this place to fill the gap, hit the 618. We'll see what happens when they get there. Put that stuff on a couple of sticky notes. The XLF relatively flat today, down six cents. Not much you can do with that. But what we do have for now is a low, higher low, higher low, so far. And that's not necessarily bearish, that's just running some tests, maintaining some higher low situations. Back above the moving averages is the bull case for a run, stay below is the bear case because the trend is your friend until she throws your shit out the window. So the only thing the bulls have on this chart right now are these higher lows, that's it. 
Smash Mouth, SMH, Semiconductor Index, no surprise. NVIDIA gets the run. 132.70 was my number from before. That's no good. And we said, because they were coming up short and eating time off the clock under that number, that likely wasn't the destination. It was just an important place that they had to get to. Well, here they are well above it at 140 and change. Where's the next spot? Look at this tremendous volume. About 141.21, not sure you saw this before. It's been on the chart. The high today, 141.14. Close enough. Seven cents away, no accidents or coincidences. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.